Hi, my name is Bora Jambula and this is the third video uh, about our FEST API project. So, in this video, now we are going to start to... Actually, in the previous video, we have just connect our front-end side with our back-end side. So, in the back-end side, we have a running API uh, created by Python and we have an HTML application a web application on the front end side now we have just get the data from our api in the json format like this and we have used just the fetch function from the javascript from javascript all right but uh, as i said in the previous video we have some other options and uh, the first thing I'm going to do in this video to do the same thing by using the jQuery library. jQuery is a library uh, for JavaScript and uh, it's a very old, uh, uh, actually it's a very aged uh, library. It has still some usage areas. So I found it, I find it useful. So let me show you the usage of the jQuery first to get some data uh, from a URL from an API so we can just click this button to see our index.html in Chrome and we have our console here and now I think it's not running so let me start the API first all right now we have it let me reload and we have the output so uh, i'm going to search for jquery first and i'm going to import the library so where is it all right we have the url here let me just right click and copy this link and then here in the head section in our HTML file, we can just import it. Let's say scripts source is this URL. All right, like this. So all right, this part remains and before this i'm going to create another script section and let's say the library jquery and from this i'm going to use the ix methods and let's say actually the structure is very similar we should just define a url first so our url again is let's use jquery here to understand if it runs correctly we have this url and then we should just define the type of this request and it's get And also we should define the data type, which is JSON. And then it's the same thing again. It's an asynchronous function. So we should just uh, write here something like then keyword, like we use in the fetch function. But this time it's going to be the success. So it says if this function success runs successfully and returns with a response then do this all right and i'm going to create here a function and it returns with the data so let's use this data like this <coughs> sorry use this data in this function so again i'm going to write this to the console so let's say console.log and data like this 
So let me save this and click again. See the output. And we have two of them now. All right. So the first one runs, the first one comes from jQuery, and the second one comes from the fetch function. So now it runs without an error. So now I'm going to do something. I just want to uh, use Python site, use backend site to handle the data and pre process the data. And I'm going to pass this data to the JavaScript site and then do something in the JavaScript site. Again, I'm going to use the Plotly library. I just want to, sorry. Uh, I just want to get familiar with the fast API actually. All right. So in the Python site, All right, sorry for the interruption. In the Python site, I'm going to define a uh, class to generate some random numbers. So let's import the numpy first. So let's say import numpy as np. I'm going to use this to generate some random integers random numbers and then i'm going to pass this random numbers to the javascript site and then i'm going to use these random numbers to create an histogram by using the plotly library all right so let's say for example here after we allowed uh, the origins so let's say, for example, class random numbers. It's going to be a very simple class. Let's start with the constructor. Let's say it's going to take an argument with the number of the random numbers. So let's say self.n equals n. And then Let's generate these numbers. Let's say self dot data equals to numpy random with randint with uh, which generates some random integers between some limits. And these limits, let's say, starting from zero all the way up to one hundred. And we are going to generate the n number of integers. All right, and Let's make some encapsulation and let's add here another method. Let's say get data and it's going to return this data and let's say in the Python list format like this. And after we create an instance to this class, we can just add another uh, numbers. We have another no. We can just add another numbers and then another numbers and then another numbers, another amount of numbers. So I'm going to add here another method with the name add, and it's just again get an argument n. And when we call this method, it's going to add n number of uh, integers to our self dot data. So let's say self dot data equals to numpy dot append self dot data and we are going to use the same method np random randint between zero and one hundred and n all right so we have this very simple class to generate some random integers and Let's create another endpoint here in our API. Let's say app. Again, we are going to handle the get requests. And as you can see, we have some other options. We are going to learn them. We can just have put or some other requests. We are going to learn 
when we are ready but right now we just handle the get requests again let's say the URL random and we should just get an argument let's say and like this and again we need a function let's say def for example random underscore numbers and it's going to take an argument and with the type integer all right it's going to be a very very simple function let's say r equals to an instance random numbers with the n and then it's just return r dot get data all right now the python site is ready we are going to turn back to the javascript site here let's start by getting this data so i'm going to change this url to random let's start with 10 numbers for example again with the get request type is json and we are going to get the data all right this seems to be ready we can just delete or let's just keep this part and i'm going to click this again let's see the output and we have an array now all right and this array we have 10 random random integers between 0 and 100 all right it works now the next thing i'm going to do is to import the plot the library into my html file and then i'm going to try to generate an histogram by using all these numbers so let's search for plot the javascript library click this and this part works for us here now we have the plot day and to use the plot day we should just define our uh, comments we should just use the plot the library inside here right so because we just get the data and then we are going to use the data here so after this I'm going to get the data first so let's say create an empty JavaScript array like this and after this I'm going to iterate over my data so let's create a for loop here let's say for i equals to zero and then when i is smaller than data dot length actually the number of items that we have in the data and then increase i actually the data is a javascript array but i'm going to do it in this way because uh, we can just send another thing in the next step by using the data but this part is more manageable so we can just get all the data to a, another a javascript array x and after this i'm going to append the x array so to do this in javascript i'm going to use x dot push so push a new item to my javascript array x and this item is data i like this all right after this we can just check if we did it correctly so let's say console.log x 
click again. See the output. And we should have two arrays. And they need to be same. And it works. As you can see, we have an array here and we have another array here. But like I said, I'm going to prefer this way. So now we should just create a plotly histogram by using this data. So after this, we should just delete this part, I think. After this, the first thing I'm going to do is to create our trace to use in our plotly histogram. So let's say let's trace. And the data comes from x. So it's going to be like this. And the type of our plot is going to be an histogram. Histogram. We should just uh, use the automatically created pins. But for this example, I just want to define them by myself. So let's say x pins. Let's give a starting point. So let's say start zero and end 100 our limits in the python file and also let's define the step size so let's increase these pins by 10 by 10. now we have our trace and this part is optional but i'm going to create a layout so let's say give a title here and let's say histogram api just a dummy title and let's create a label for x-axis so let's say random numbers And the same thing for y-axis. Let's say frequency. And also let's put some gaps between the bars which we have in our histogram. So to do this, I'm going to use the bar gap option like this. After this, we are ready now. We can just use the, our plot the library and new plot methods from this library. And of course, now we need a div. So before this, let's create a div here. So let's say div. Let's use an ID. Let's say plot the dash div. Turn back to here and use this ID now plotly dash div and we are going to use our trace and we are going to use our layout and trace can be more more than one so trace should be in a list so like this layouts can be defined like this if we did it correctly then it should create an histogram by using these 10 random numbers coming from the python Save this and see the output. All right, it works. It works. Let's see the JavaScript console. It works very well. And in the next video, we are going to get some data progressively and then we are going to update our histogram by using this new data.